Wanting to add a third function to this Massey Ferguson here to run a new attachment and ordered this diverter valve. I'm trying to do this as cost effective possible. I got all these hydraulic fittings from the hydraulic shop. So the plan is, I was watching some videos on how most people do them and I'm going to do mine different. A lot of people like to mount this back in here which I can see why it's easy to grab your two hoses for your feed and return. And then they run auxiliary hoses all the way up and have it work that way. But I'm wanting to just splice in up here and just have this valve mounted right dead here and then the two couplers sticking off the front of it kind of like that you know hanging down so the plan was to make this more simple i think i have most of the stuff i need so what i'm going to do is t in to these two lines and then have the valve and how this works is you got lines coming in and going out for your normal hydraulic function you send 12 volts to this and it switches that function to these two ports so to run something auxiliary function with the same hydraulic flow that would normally be running the other function in this case it's the bucket curl i mean you can use any function but so the plan was just to put that in here and not buy any hoses however that's still going to come into here and send hydraulic power to the three point or to the third function whenever I give that 12 volts but where it's coming out of this T it's still going to send hydraulic power to that cylinder but this cylinder will be blocked off because it'll be switched to this so I'm hoping that where this is blocked off there's too much resistance to move that one and it just sends the power to the attachment if this doesn't work the way I want it to, all I'll do is add in some T's and then those lines will hook on this side of the valve and cap those two ends. to go in like that. It's going to have to be spaced up just a little more.
Should have done this before. I put these on there, but yeah. All right, I found some tape. So hopefully, don't leak. If not, I mean, I'll pick up some more tomorrow. But... We're gonna have them like that. What do y'all think? I think that looks pretty good. So I need to go find me a spacer and drill and tap a new hole for this to bolt into. This thing's actually a lot solider than I thought it would be. Then we gotta wire this thing. Oh, it is a cool feature. I didn't know this thing turned. I guess it's supposed to turn. Anyways, it does turn. So that is nice. I can get that wire probably spinned around the back. Tucked out of the way. I decided we're going to go ahead and make this thing look like it's factory. Okay, I went ahead and got the wires run and hooked up off camera. And I bought this switch at the auto parts store and I just taped it up here temporarily. So 
So let me run you through this real quick. Um, really simple. A couple different ways you can wire this. The way I have it hooked up is I got this 12 volt wire here running right off the battery. If I can get it. And then right under here, I've got a fuse block. Definitely want to fuse. And then I've got the ground just running off the battery. The ground goes straight all the way down to that valve. Then the power, I didn't run a relay. I ran the power straight to the switch. And then the other side of the switch goes to the other side of this uh, electromagnet diverter valve thing. Anyway, so I couldn't. Took me a while to find online which side was power, which side was ground. It said that it's labeled one, two. So the one is the power and the two is the ground. But I'm not sure how much that matters because it's just an electromagnet. If it's like trailer brakes, it doesn't matter the polarity. But that's the simplest you could do it. And this switch is rated for way more current than what's running through it. But if you don't want to run the current through the switch, you can use a relay like this. And all you do for it is 12 volts and then a ground. And, you know, it'd be a larger 12 volt and larger ground than whatever small switch you'd be running. And then, like, right here, this would be your trigger wire. And then you would send this side here. The larger 12 volts would go down to operate the valve if you wanted to run a relay. As far as cost, I bought all this stuff back in February. I just didn't have an attachment to put it on, so I hadn't done it yet. But it was, my total was $202. So it was $195 for this, and then like $7 for that little plug on the back. And then this one is the 24 gallon a minute. I don't think, you probably don't need one that's that many gallons a minute. I just, that's what I got. And they sell kits to do these, but all the kits, I mean, they're like any five to six hundred dollars. And it just comes with some hydraulic fittings. It does have a nice little button on the joystick and a wiring harness, but I just couldn't see giving, you know, an extra three or four hundred dollars for what little bit of stuff you get. So that's this is a route I went curious to see if it's going to try and tilt the bucket with this engaged where it's still going to have power over here like i said that's not a huge deal if it does we just cap those two move these two over here on a t and solve that problem i guess let's start it up and see like when i switch it if it bogs or if it just tries to tilt or what it does so i started it didn't see any leaks so let's try that Worried. Why does that look wet? Oh, that's just that wet paint. Okay. I was worried that it would uh overpower that cylinder, but no, that locks it solid. I'm sure you could probably see one, it would move a little bit and then bog, so that's good. That means when there's an attachment here and I hit that, it's gonna send all that power to the attachment. So that's gonna be sweet. You might be wondering what attachment I'm getting. Well, I'm going to pick it up tonight, so that'll be a long ride for me, but you guys will see it in like a second, so. Check this out. I picked up this grapple bucket at the auction the other day. So the plan is to put this on the front of the backhoe. So I got a good deal on this, or well, no one was bidding on it because this cylinder over here was leaking. I, they had it already took off. And it's missing one of the quick couplers. They just got it plugged. And it don't look like it's in too bad a shape. The front cutting edge is wore down, you know, quite a bit. Which is to be expected, but it's nice. It's a real heavy duty bucket. 
So I guess let's see if we can fix this cylinder. Get that coupler and try this thing out. Okay, to pull this guy apart, it takes some special tool to unscrew that. I'm gonna see if we can get it with a pipe wrench. Just a touch. Oh, that wasn't even very tight. This is probably a bad idea. Nope, that worked perfect. Hmm. I don't know. Let's get these cleaned up, get these seals popped out, and uh, go get some new ones. Okay, just got back from the local seal supplier and got these. Everyone asks me where I get, like, hydraulic seals and stuff. I have a local place that specializes in nothing but o-rings and hydraulic seals so that's where i get them and they always treat me right all these seals for this they even put these on for me it was like 17 bucks so so now i'm just going to smear some grease on all these just to keep them from getting damaged while we install them that put a little bit on this guy so a little dab on that o-ring
Okay. All right, this is uh, ready to go back together. Okay. I cleaned this thing out with some brake clean. Wiped it out good, so. That's good to go. Oh, why wow, that's so difficult. Last thing I want to get to, I think I mentioned it was missing this female coupler so went and picked one up they i wanted a 90 so they matched but they didn't have a 90 and i was like 50 bucks so i wasn't gonna buy two of them when i have this one so one will be a 90 one will be a straight and that's just how it's gonna be should be good it don't matter which side which one goes on all that'll do is reverse which way you actuate the controls not a big deal
Alright, good to go. Houses are in the way right here. I'm shutting my quick attach lock. Let's see if we can't fix that. Might be a two hand thing. wondering why I need this and I mean you don't really need anything but I figured it would help out a lot with moving a lot of trees and brush and logs ideally I wanted a root gravel bucket but since I got a good deal on this one this is what we're gonna use so I guess let's try this thing out thing does
see how well it goes with stone.
Well, I am very happy with this attachment here. Let's see, is this cylinder leaking? Nope, dry as can be. Sweet, so that's fixed. Got this. One thing I am going to do, that's just where paint's wet. But one thing I am going to do, like I mentioned, is I'm going to get two longer lines and two T's and move these over here. Because whenever you use a grapple, it does kind of put that at a weird twist. And I, I'm sure over an extended period of time, that will cause an issue. So that, and I'll hammer these out. So use the grease fittings. We're good. That's all I got for this one. So I gotta need to cut up this pile of firewood behind me. So I guess we will see you guys in those videos.